Hello, I'm Sam and welcome along to a RayWenderlick.com screencast. Today we're going to take a look at the new user notifications framework present in iOS 10. We're going to base our screencast on this app here called CuddlePix, which has the ability to schedule local user notifications to send you a nice picture every now and again, or a cuddle. We're going to add that in that functionality. In the same way that you're used to with notifications, you have to ask the user for permission to be able to display them. That's both local and remote. And the same is true with the, U, the new user notifications framework. The difference here, though, is that you use the UN notif user notification center. You grab the current one and use the request authorization method. In there, you provide a list of the different types of notifications you want to be allowed, be it alert, sound, or badge. Here in this application, this is already done for you. You get a callback saying whether or not you have been granted access and also an error if there's been a problem. We're now going to head into this other view controller, which is the one that has the buttons on it that allows you to trigger those notifications. There's a bit of UI code at the top. The important method that we're going to implement here is this private one, schedule a random notification in seconds with a completion block. The random aspect of it is the image that's going to be contained in that notification. Now, notification has several aspects to it. It has some content. It has a trigger, which is tells it when should this notification actually fire. And you bundle that up in a request and then pass it off to the notification center to actually schedule it. We're going to create the content up first. And for that, we use the mutable content, UN mutable con notification content. This obviously has a immutable cousin, brother, I don't know, which is what you will get back when notification actually fires. You'll get a mutable version of the same thing. Now, within there, there are all kinds of different fields, including title, which you have to provide, Got that new cuddle picks. Uh, you can also provide a subtitle, which, I which is new in iOS 10. Uh, you also have to provide a body associated with it. We'll call that cheer, cheer yourself up with a hug and then an obligatory emoji. Now, once you've got your content, you need to work out, well, when should it happen? And there are three different ways that you can trigger local notifications. You can do it with a time interval, which is what we're going to do here, time interval notification trigger, which takes a time interval, which we've been luckily provided, and we don't want it to repeat. In addition to the time interval notification trigger, you can do a calendar one, which allows you to specify a specific calendar date and time. Or you can do a location-based one, which will use geofencing and eye beacons and the such like to trigger it when you arrive somewhere or leave somewhere. Oops, come down, next code. Now that we've got the content and the trigger, we can go ahead and create the request associated with this notification. That's a UN notification request which takes three things. It takes an identifier. An identifier is just a unique string for this specific notification, and it allows you to go back later on and cancel it or reschedule it or update the content or any of those things. So for this, we're going to use this random image name that we've created at the top there. The content, well, that's just the content we created, and then we need a trigger as well. Once we've created the request, we can go ahead and actually pass it off to the notification center to schedule it. So we grab the current notification center and we add a request. And you get a completion handler that will pass you an error if there's been a problem. So if there is an error, then we'll just print out the localized note. Uh, the What's it called? Localized description for now. Error localized description. And the important thing we do need to do because of the way that this method's been implemented is we must call this completion handler once we're done scheduling. 
let's just move that inside. Now if I build and run this and jump back over to the simulator, let wait for Cuddlepix to start. Now when I jump in here and hit the Cuddle Me Now button, and if I jump back to the home so that we can see this notification arrive, then five seconds later, there we go, we've got the notification and I can force touch into there to see the expanded view and to be able to dismiss it. That's cool, but that's not any great new functionality. Subtitles are new, but other than that, it's all very similar. One great thing that we can now do using the notifications framework is the ability to add attachments to notifications, which is the point of this random image name that we've got at the top. The way that we do that is to turn this into an attachment, and an attachment takes an identifier, which is a string, and a URL. What we're going to do is create that URL, so image URL is that's going to be bundle. It's going to be in the main bundle. We want the URL for resource string is the random image name with extension of it's a JPEG. So now we've grabbed the URL and we can make the attachment, which is a UN notification attachment. Uh, uh, UN notification attachment attachment. can't see it. There it is, UN notification attachment. And this takes an identifier, so we'll go for the random image name. The URL, we've created that, that's the image URL. And we don't need any options here. And once we've done that, we can attach that with the content. Attachments is going to equal, or we'll just add the attachment in there. Now this is an error at the moment, and that is because this Oh, we need to, uh, We, I know that that image exists, so we need to put that in there. So we're going to force unwrap that image URL. And then the other problem is that UN notification attachment might throw, and we're not handling it. So I know that this is going to work. So for now, I'm going to cheat and put a, a shouted try in there. Now, it's worth mentioning a couple of things here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this whilst I explain some stuff. The image URL. What happens when you schedule this notification is that the notifications framework will grab the content of the URL and it'll copy it out of your sandbox into the system directory so that it can display it later on because it can't just jump into your sandbox at a later stage and guarantee that it's going to be there. So this must be a local resource. You can't put in any old uh, URL in here. So you must have downloaded it and it will then add this attachment to it. Now we can see what that looks like if I jump back in again and hit the Cuddle Me Now, and then I have to jump back to the home so that we can see it. Then it will appear, and you can see it appears in there, and when I force push into there, then it lays that image out for us, which is really cool. That's a really nice, simple way to do that. Now the final thing that I'm going to take a quick look at in this screencast is the fact that notice whenever I want to make sure that the uh, the, the notification appears, I have to jump back to the home screen. And that's because when the app is in the foreground, then your notifications get swallowed. That's the standard behavior of ever, up until, uh, in fact, up until iOS 10. And you'd have to implement your own UI to display a notification if you want to whilst your app is in the foreground. Well, in iOS 10, that's no longer true. I'm going to jump into the app delegate for a second. Now notice at the moment, I've not done any handling of the notification methods that are in the app delegate, and they've all been deprecated to be replaced with stuff inside the notification center. So once again, we're importing user notifications, and I've got this method down here that gets called on application did finish with launching, called configure user notifications. And what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna set ourselves up as the UN Notification Center delegate. So we're going to do this straight away. UN, not UN User Notification Center, we want to get the current one, we want to set the delegate to ourself. Now we can't do it at the moment and it will complain because we haven't actually adopted that protocol. Let's go in here and add that up here. So UN User Notification Center delegate. Now on the User Notification Center delegate, there are two methods. One of which 
you'll be familiar with in what it does, and that's this user notification center. Where is it? Did receive with completion handler. That that represents both the remote and local notification handling that used to be on the app delegate. So when you implement that, then you'll get a callback just telling you that this notification was received. And that allows you to do your background handling or whatever it is that you need to do. The other one is new, and that's this user notification center will present with completion handler. And that gets called when the application is in the foreground and only when the application is in the foreground. And the the effect of this is that you can say, actually, I do want to show this notification whilst my app is in the foreground. Let's go ahead and implement that method. So that's a user notification center will present notification. This is really simple. You get given a completion handler, which takes this UN notification presentation option. So we have a quick look in there. Badge, sound, and alert. And what that means is you need to call that completion handler with a list of the things that you're happy for the notification to trigger. So I'm going to say completion handler, and I only want an alert. What that means is now that we're in the foreground, this method will get called, and it will then call this completion handler and say, yes, it's okay, you can show me an alert. Let's build and run. Jump back into the simulator, cut on me now, and I don't have to leave this, I can stay with this in the foreground. A few seconds later, there it is, it's displayed it as an alert, and we get exactly the same functionality as before. And that just about covers the API that allows you to transition from the old way of doing user notifications to the new way with the user notifications framework. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.